What up, everybody? It looks like the Drake hate train is back at the station. But before we get started, some of you guys might like my t-shirt. The Donald J. Trump assassination not ready to die parody tee. It's modeled after the Biggie ready to die limited edition t-shirts, 24 in each size. If you like what you see and you think it looks fly, Make sure to click the link and uh, get yourself one. Now let's get to the real issue. Some of you guys uh, may or may not know, but Childish Gambino, AKA Donald Glover, has just released a new album, Bando Stone in the New World. It's a solid album. I, I've listened to the whole thing. I still wanna listen to it a couple more times before I do some sort of album review or even a couple different track reviews. Um, but this track review, I guess you could call it, uh, had to come a little bit sooner because I don't know if you've been seeing anything, but the internet is on fire. They're calling out a couple of the songs he has on the album. The two tracks in question are Yoshinoya and Talk My Shit. Great songs, great songs. They both fit into the album pretty well, and it's kind of a refresher because if you're listening to the album, it's a little bit more mainstream and alternative than rap. So to have these songs in it, I think it kind of brings it back to the core of rap where Childish Gambino started. That being said, these songs are being called out for basically being clones of Drake. I know there's a lot of people going to roll their eyes. Oh, you know, a lot of people are hating. You know, you know, what's funny to me is it actually kind of surprised me that people even called it out because first of all, it definitely is. If you listen to either of these uh, songs, you can just hear it. It's a, it's a very, very clear Drake cadence. And then on top of that, one of the songs, I believe Yoshinoya, Reminds me a lot of that song that he recently made with Travis Scott. Drake, since he lost his beef, has been getting a lot of flack for everything. Uh, so I, I didn't expect people to call it out because it very much is. If you if you listen to Drake a lot and you listen to his whole albums, not just some of the stuff that's on the radio, you know what his flows and his cadences sound like. And I personally feel like Childish Gambino has kind of been doing this for a very, very long time in fact i kind of feel like he plays this you know this role of like i'm drake but alternative drake you know uh which makes sense because they come from very very similar backgrounds you know uh drake obviously grew up as a very rich kid in toronto who was on television doing you know a teen drama but he also does a little bit of comedy as well too and donald glover grew up very well to do in georgia and came up here to nyu came up to new york city killed it in comedy is now this comedy legend and hilarious guy so they both come through theater you know and they both come through privileged backgrounds and it wouldn't surprise me if someone like drake was kind of the blueprint for donald glover um and they've just had a lot of like weird vibes with each other i don't even know if they've ever spoken to each other but it feels like there's some sort of distance but also a connection almost similar to joe budden and drake where it's like they're so close that they kind of hate each other like you ever meet two people who are so alike that because of that they just can't be around each other that's what i think joe budden and drake have and that's kind of what i'm thinking that donald glover and drake have it's like this thing and I, I think it's more on donald glover's side too a little bit where it's like a bit being a bit obsessed uh over drake you know while still disliking him or putting him down a bit you know a lot of people don't know this but donald glover has said before that this is america which is his biggest song his grammy winning song was actually started as a drake diss and that's something where it's like eh, whatever you know people make disses all the time but to find that out and then to put it together with donald glover's general style that he has and then putting on top of that the fact that you know, he's making a Drake disc, but he also named one of his kids Drake, which is strange. And then he named the other one Legend, which is like a big song that Drake has. Um, but yet you're making disses about the guy. So, you know, I think it's kind of interesting that we're bringing up these topics about biters and all that stuff. Because I think Drake is one of those people who for a long time, there's a lot of people who bite his style. 
There's a lot of people who have been influenced by him, heavily influenced. But I think because it's like cool almost not to like him, you can very much deny that you've taken anything from him and people will let you roll with it. You know, uh, it's only now because of this whole beef thing that I think a lot of Drake's supporters are now coming out because Drake has been winning for so long that if you take his influence and just deny it, all of his followers, all of his fans would be like, eh, whatever, who cares? He's got another number one. But now he's on the ropes, you know what I mean? And he needs every little accolade that he can get. And so now when people try to take Drake's stuff and not kind of say his influence, I think people get a little bit more defensive. Uh, which is funny because, you know, guys, if you're a Drake fan, like I am a Drake fan, you know, you're going to have to really build a tough skin for this because that's what happens with beefs. When a person loses a beef, they're allowed to kind of get run through the mud and tar and feathered for at least a little bit. You got to actually, I have to actually say this, like, you know, kudos to Drake, even though he lost undeniably to Kendrick Lamar, he is so incredibly popular that he has been on the losing end of two major beefs and he still does not seem like he's gone forever you know which is a little bit unprecedented you know when a person's at the echelon that drake is at and they get taken down a peg it's a huge deal they kind of disappear a little bit or they're really really lowered you know um, which is why a lot of bigger rappers don't really get into big beefs because that might change your ranking on the roster, you know, and who wants that? No one wants to take that chance. But yeah, you know, when a person loses a beef, a lot of times they get dragged through the mud. A lot of times people steal things or take influences from them. A lot of times people kick their back in, you know what I mean? A little bit to get that extra clout on the internet. A lot of times people will get influenced by them or take certain lines, but pretend like they've never thought that rapper was ever good at all, you know? Um, and I think that's just Drake's turn in all this. You, you know, we're just going to have to get used to that for a while, you know, because at the end of the day, Drake has undoubtedly influence a lot of people and that's not to say that drake hasn't been influenced by tons of things that might even be why his form of making music is so palatable is because he listens to so much other shit because he gets influenced by so many other people in so many other regions that when he makes an amalgamation of it which is his sound you know it kind of works for wherever you are across the world um you know maybe that's why so there's no problem in being influenced by somebody, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just the fact that you kind of have to be honest about that influence. But when it comes to Drake and, you know, being influenced by Drake, saying you were influenced by him is a very, very hard thing for people to do. Why? I don't know. I honestly don't know, but it, it's, it's weird, you know? Uh, but this is, you know, like I said, this is just par for the course, you know, a lot of guys are going to be biting right now with no thoughts of repercussion. This almost reminds me of like Louis CK when he got in trouble and the world turned on him. Right. And then me as a comedian, I would go to comedy clubs and I would see comedians every once in a while blatantly steal his joke on stage. I would see the audience know that this comedian is blatantly stealing Louis C.K.'s joke on stage and both sides didn't care because they just hated him. He was in this vacuum of hatred and doubt and anger and animosity. So that's a little bit of the punishment is not only can you not be around here, not only do we not fuck with you in this industry, but also we're going to take all your shit and pretend that this guy made it and 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 this guy made it. And we're going to act as if we've never needed you and we've always had these sounds or we've always had these thought processes. Um, so this is interesting, you know, to see, you know, I'm not really upset at Donald Glover. I think he's been doing what he's always been doing, which is being inspired by Drake. Um, and I think he can continue to do that. You know, it's just about, I think, maybe being a little bit more honest and being a little bit 
more complimentary. But to all the Drake fans out there watching this, we're probably not going to get that, bro. We're probably not going to get that. You just got to deal with it. The game is the game is the game. And it is what it is. And just keep going. But Donald Glover is a great artist. His new album is pretty pretty solid, man. So definitely, definitely check it out. And people get influenced from everybody, bro. So it's not that big of a deal. But people need to start putting some respect on Jersey Drake's name. They really do. Because he has paved the way for a lot of people out here. Show some goddamn respect. And get in these comments and say what's up, guys. That's been the episode. That's been the video. I'll see you later. Peace.